The world's second largest economy is grappling with a real estate debt crisis, weakening consumption, and an aging population. Trade tensions with the United States and the European Union, which have sought to limit Beijing's access to sensitive technology, as well as putting up tariffs to protect their markets from cheap, subsidized Chinese goods, are also dragging growth down. In fact, official statistics show the economy grew by only 4.7% in the second quarter of the year. It represents the slowest rate of expansion since early 2023, when China was emerging from a crippling zero-COVID policy that actually strangled growth. Analysts, though polled by Bloomberg, had expected 5.1%. The figures came the same day that China's ruling Communist Party kicked off a key meeting led by President Xi Jinping focused on the economy. But for further clarity, we have with us China expert Gunjan Singh, who's also associate professor at the OP Jindal Global University. Thank you so much for joining us on The World 24-7. Realistically, can we expect... Any major reforms at this meeting, or should we expect a modest policy tweak that expands high-tech manufacturing and delivers a sprinkling of support to housing and households? Uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, the third plenum is on, started on 15th. It's a four-day event, will conclude on 18th. And as you rightly mentioned, the quarter figures were not in as China expected it to be. I think everybody was expected China to grow at at least 5 or 5.1 percent, but the figures stand at 4.7 percent, which is little troubling for Xi Jinping at the moment. However, I think the figures also indicated that China had a $100 billion trade uh, or surplus uh, for just the month of June uh, in the quarter. So that's something positive. Uh, coming to the third plenum, uh, uh, it's been delayed, we all know. I think everybody was eagerly waiting to see when this will happen. Third plenums have historically been uh, an insight into how China's economy is going to progress or what path the Chinese Communist Party will undertake with this economy for the next five years. Uh, major reforms would be, uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, Xi Jinping is in a position or in a situation to undertake major reforms. But the challenges are huge, like as you mentioned, debt crisis, real estate, innovation, uh, the challenges with the global trade, uh, uh, the upcoming US elections and tariffs and things, all will definitely be the focus. Plus, unemployment is also one of the major challenges. Domestic consumption is less in China. Xi Jinping had adopted the, or pushed for the dual circulation, which is promoting domestic consumption. Post-COVID, we've not seen any improvement in that. Chinese domestic consumptions are still way lower than global standards. So yes, the third plenum is much awaited, and uh, there are major issues that Xi Jinping will have to focus on. But I still not think there'll be any major thing. I still think the focus may be on innovation and trying to keep the momentum of reforms going. Right. But Beijing has said that it's aiming for 5% growth this year, enviable for many Western countries, but a far cry from the double-digit expansion that actually for years drove the Chinese economy. Gunjan, but experts highlight that the economic uncertainty is also fueling a vicious cycle that has kept consumption stubbornly low there. Yeah, uh, see, China has traditionally been an economy which focuses on saving. Chinese people tend to save a lot. We know that. And that has been one of the major challenges for the Communist Party, that pushing Chinese people to consume what they are producing. And Chinese government or the CCP, Xi Jinping, still believe that if the domestic consumption improves, Chinese economy will survive this major turbulent phase. However, COVID, the global, the way the global economy is dwindling, the way China is being pressurized uh, with tariffs and other things, the Western world putting uh, other limitations on the export of EVs and solar panels. So Chinese economy today, we cannot see it just in isolation. The global geopolitical scenario right. is also a major player. And COVID, COVID restrictions have also pushed Chinese people to save a lot. The stringent policies that the Xi Jinping government followed during COVID and the problems that the Chinese people faced has also had an impact on how Chinese people will spend. So uh, the Chinese government will also, in this plenum, will also have to push towards uh, building the trust of the people in the economy. Yes. Right now, I feel the Chinese people lack a little bit of trust uh, in the way the economy is functioning and the Chinese Communist 
communist party's uh, response towards them so it is more of a trust factor i feel if the chinese government can show that it is right. pushing towards uh, major reforms uh, or reforms which will help the people in the long run maybe we can see some increase in domestic consumption too well we'll be keeping a close eye on the key takeaways analysts say a lot is required for a full rebound in china as the country's economy has yet to bounce back more than 18 months after damaging covid-19 restrictions ended but thank you so much gunjan singh for joining us